Welcome back to Morgan's video blog with writing tips from the pros and of course my own writerly musings. Today I'm here with family structures in science fiction and fantasy, a Balticon 56 panel from 2022. So I'm back with more notes from Balticon 2022. At the titular panel, the panelists were Monica Luzone, CJ Cherry, Christine Sanquist, and Ada Palmer, with the moderator being Jennifer R. Povey. The description was as follows. From werewolf clans to alien hives, this panel will discuss the most imaginative and thought-provoking examples of family structure in genre works. So in science fiction and fantasy, you will find a wider range of like unusual quote unquote family structures. In America, the expected family structure is the nuclear family, with a married couple consisting of a man and a woman with a median of two children. Now, unusual family structures you might find elsewhere in science fiction and fantasy, and maybe even the wor real world, are extended family groups, found family, family displaced in space and time. From history, we get royal and noble families with their households consisting of artists and craftsmen and servants and fosters and more. Uh, we have polyamorous relationships like a web. Everyone in the relationship can be dating any number of other people so long as everyone knows. And relationships completely not centered around raising children. So. How do you shape the families in your world that you're writing? Does your family shape the world or does the world shape the family? Obviously, as the writer, you can do it many ways. You can start with the characters, maybe just two people, and grow their connections from there. Or look at historical shifts in family unity structures and the underlying factors, then kick those factors up to 11 um, and play with them. You can research nonfiction on how the civil rights movement, the LGBTQA plus movement, medieval family structures and cultures from around the world, how they changed and shifted as society changed around them. Um, for example, the Irish had one year marriages, uh, trial marriages. So one thing to do once you kind of come up with this structure is to think about what did the previous generation look like to make sure you've thought out how it's going to play out. And you might want to investigate if the family structure you've created makes sense with the story and the world setting. Um, you also want to think through less human elements. Say you have a hive mind. Um, is it a hive family or is it a queen with slaves? Are there individuals or just one mind and each individual unit is like your arm or your leg and just controlled by your brain? And can awareness shift from one hive unit to another? If one dies, does its brain just pop into another one? It's up to you. It's your story. So. Let's also talk about how does reproduction control families? A lot of human family structures are influenced by inheritance practices and taking care of children. Control over reproduction changes a lot of things. Um, in the Expanse series and inspired by C.J. Cherry's Satine, uh, Citine, uh, book, there are people who use artificial wombs, educate their offspring through tapes, and their people come out ready to be productive citizens. They don't have parents, but they're assigned a mentor or instructor. In the Vercosigan series by Lois Bujold, there's a main character whose life was affected by their parents not using an artificial womb. Um, there are bioengineered people in the uh, book series book, um, Syntaganda, and in Ethan of Athos, there's a planet of only males that have children with donor eggs and artificial wombs. 
um, in Thessaly by Joe Walton, there's a generation of children raised by a city of philosophers in a grand experiment. I will be putting all of these titles and authors down below because I know it's hard to get all these references. So let's talk about some more recommendation. This panel was 90% recommendations. So let's get to them. Um, there are the books of the Raksura by Martha Wells. It has a matriarchal hive family. Murderbot, also by Martha Wells, uh, features found family and AI. The Expanse series by James S.A. Corey contain James Holden, whose parents are a polyamorous group with five men and three women. The Deepest Rift by Ruthanna Emrys has scientists where the characters assigned research groups are expected to become their family. Uh, the Demolished Man by Alfred Bester has family relationships at the core of the plot, although it's a little dated. <clears throat> the Alliance Union series by C.J. Cherry has the Spacer families traveling through space where everyone on the ship is related and dalliances happen when they're in port. In No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull, there's polyamorous relationships just as if it was a normal relationship because they can be. Uh, in Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy by Timothy Zahn, uh, they have fam people who switch families based on either their politics or new job opportunities. Where you work and where you align yourself is your family. In The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein, it's got polandry and quote-unquote line marriages where if something happens to one of the husbands or wives, the next person in line replaces the husband or wife. While it gives the children a continuity of parents, it can be squicky in practice. Um, a Fire Upon the Deep by Werner Venge has a hive mind alien, quote unquote, dog-like aliens, uh, families, and AIs that can overwrite organic creatures' minds. Um, not really sure what sort of family structure that is. Uh, Astro Boy, otherwise known as Mighty Adam in Japan, was created by Osamu Tezuka and has an AI boy created for human parents who lost their son and later ends up with AI created to be his parents when the humans have no more use for a boy who never grows up. And Catfishing on CatNet by Naomi Kritzer explores online friendships and those relationships and AI as well. Are there relationship structures you'd like to see get more page time? Are there any tips or tricks on creating a new um, or exploring other relationship structures that the panelists missed? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and tune in again next week for more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.